thank you for stopping by Minnesota Black Robe Regiment. As always, I'd love a subscription. Um, love your feedback. Love your comments. Uh, love your viewing the video. That's awesome. Love it. Uh, this is going to be another installment or another episode of Casual Cognitive Dissidence. This is installment number or episode number five. Um, we're going to be looking at an interaction that I had with another fan of the CARE 11 News Network and the story that they ran. The particular story happens to be about Governor Walls and his um, deciding to call up the National Guard. So here we go. Let's take a look at this. Governor Tim Wall said he's planning to call up the Minnesota National Guard amid reports of potential armed protests nationwide. Um, Walls to call up National Guard ahead of possible protest and tour the state to call for civility. So first, we're going to start with the reality that the FBI is reporting that allegedly there are going to be people showing up to try and take over the capitals and the capital buildings of their respective states here in the United States as we ramp up towards uh, the inauguration. Now, anybody who is planning this is an idiot. It's it's uncalled for. It's It would be violent. It would be um, criminal. It, it would, at the very least, border on, if not be fallout uh, insurrection. And I do not support it. I do not in any way support it. If that's your plan, if you plan on having a protest, I would also tell you to not do it because quite frankly, at this point in time, they're going to be looking for any reason that they can to discredit even peaceful protests by patriots and constitutionalists. So it's moronic to do that right now. There are better ways of making your voice heard, make videos, make posts, write to congressmen, write to your senators, write to your legislative bodies whatever the case might be. So now that being said, I want to get down to my point here and I, and, and boy, this is gonna sound harsh and I'm okay with that. And I mean it, here we have the governor ahead of time over reported, rumored, not, not anything that's actionable. And that's, that, that's clear here, possible protest, our governor, sat on his hands after George Floyd died. Governor Walls sat on his rear end, on his soft cushioned derriere, in his cushioned little mansion that we pay for as taxpayers, while the city of Minneapolis burned. Entire little neighborhoods burned. Priest, police precincts burned. Private businesses owned by minorities in the communities were being burned. And Governor Walls got into a pissing match with Jacob Fry over whose responsibility it was. And Jacob Fry shouldn't have needed to ask. And Fry didn't ask soon enough. And law enforcement didn't ask. And there was no coordination. You were a sergeant major in the Army National Guard. There's some question as to whether or not you actually did anything in the Army National Guard. And we'll address that maybe in an interview or a conversation that could be coming up, we, we'll see. Uh, but you sat on your hands, Governor. You sat on your hands. You let criminals, and this is what I say here, oh, so now you can be proactive, but when criminal miscreants, thugs, and animals were actively looting and burning down buildings, you drug your feet. What a sham and shill. And I mean that. He drug his feet. We had to give them space. We had to give them space to loot, to steal, and destroy. We had to give them space. And this is a, a classic example of, it's okay if it happens over there, but don't let it happen where it matters to me. Now, I don't want anything to happen to the Capitol. I don't think it's going to. I don't think there are any plans for anybody to go in and try and burn it down or steal anything or break in. Now, I would love an opportunity to go in, in mass, and, and, and have our voices be heard, but they've stripped that liberty away from us and will not let us enter the building that we've paid for, that we continue to pay for, that belongs to us, we the people, because they've forgotten that we are a government of the people, for the people, by the people. They've forgotten that, and they've, they've kept us from going to 
our building and being part of the legislative process. They, they won't, we can't watch the Senate. We can't watch the House of Representatives. They won't let us anywhere near. And so it's easy for them to go and extend his, his powers right now. And, and so, yes, I, I honestly believe, I don't believe there's anything that's gonna happen. I, don't, I think the FBI is doing this intentionally. I think they're overreacting and understandably so, but I don't think there are any plans for any of this to happen. I've been in numerous rallies with numerous people carrying a firearm. No one has done any violence to anyone. No one's made a threat to the governor. No one has made a threat to any of the politicians. We've made them uncomfortable, you know, and quite frankly, there was an episode uh, a couple of weeks ago that I did not agree with. I wouldn't take part in. And I'm not going to be in any more protests. I'm not going to be in any more rallies right now. It's just stupid. It's just stupid. I have other ways of expressing myself, and we all do. But this right here, this is where the cognitive dissonance, and this this part's cognitive dissonance too. Uh, the, the governor is just an absolute moron, just a moron. That's about the most flattering picture I've seen of him for a while, that's for sure. Uh, I have a Jeanne Griffin who, or is it Jean? Jean Griffin. Um, she says, TC, you sound pretty racist. What? Now, Jean Griffin is the racist here, and here's why. I didn't name a particular ethnicity. I didn't name Hispanics or Asians or natives or whites or, or, or blacks. I didn't name those people. I named the actions of the crowds that were committing the crimes that were happening in Minneapolis and other places, quite frankly, but in particular, in this case, in the state of Minnesota, in Minneapolis, criminal miscreant thugs and animals were actively looting and burning down buildings and the governor drug his feet. That is not a statement of ethnicity. It is a statement of fact. That's what was happening. And the governor didn't do anything for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And there's no way on God's green earth that Governor Walls heard about the death of George Floyd and didn't know there was gonna be hell. There's no way he didn't know that. He knew it immediately. And if he didn't know it the night that Floyd died, he knew the next night was going to be a blistering, burning bloodbath. And that's exactly what it was. It was a blistering, burning bloodbath, and he did nothing. So Miss Griffin is the racist because she's assuming I'm talking about minorities like black individuals, and I'm not. I know for a fact that there were a massive amount of Antifa in that town, in that city that were doing things. I know for a fact that there were miscreant white and black and Asian and thuggish white and black and Asian people who were stealing from Target, who were looting other businesses, who were looting the liquor store across from the uh, police precinct that got burned down on the very first night of the riots. That's a fact. And it had nothing to do with ethnicity. It had everything to do with criminals taking advantage because they could. And that's why I call her on it. Nice try. And this is criminal miscreants, thugs, and animals equals racist language. No, it doesn't, Ms. Griffin. You're the racist. You're the ethnic hatred person. You're assuming that those are descriptors of black folks. And it's not. It's not. Thug and thuggish is not a word that was invented in the last 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Thug and brute have been around for a very long time. And it's been used to describe people who are thuggish and brutish, period. Your postmodern deconstruction of the American language and the etymology of words doesn't get to be correct. You don't get to do that. You don't get to co-op the words. And this is what I say to her. There are descriptors of the actions of a group of individual people who are behaving in an evil way. You don't get to co-op the language and make it something it isn't. And she couldn't handle it. And not, you know why? Because she didn't respond. She didn't respond. She got shut down. She's the racist. 
because she's applying that label to a group of people that she thinks she's defending, but she's the racist. That's the cognitive dissonance here. Jean, Jean, Jeannie, whatever, Griffin, you're a racist. And anybody who reads my comment and jumps to the conclusion that it's racist is the racist. You're a racist for a couple of reasons. One, you're applying it to a group of people and making it about a particular ethnicity, which I did not do. And furthermore, you're a racist for accusing me of being a racist for saying something that's true. And you know it's true. And here's the irony of all of this. We are dealing with a group of people who are absolutely convinced that it was white supremacists, white power, Nazi KKK types who started the riots and the looting in Minneapolis. They're convinced. They say they have the proof. They say they have it all figured out. I've yet to see that that's the case, that they actually have that figured out. Now, were there a couple of people arrested for what took place? Yes, absolutely there were. But to say that this is all the fault of white nationalists or Nazis or KKK members or what have you is absolutely ludicrous. You can't have it both ways. So either this descriptor works because I'm describing the actions of a broad group of people Period. I didn't say it was only criminal because it was a certain group of people. I said it was criminal and the governor did nothing about it. Period. He did eventually, but after so much stuff had been destroyed that we're never going to recover Minneapolis to the point where it was before. And I mean, there's still burnt out shells of buildings there because they won't let us in. They have an autonomous zone and you have to have permission to even go in there and they won't let people go in and film and all of, and shoot video and any of that stuff on public streets and public places. Police oftentimes can't even get in there. They can't even get in to plow the streets. I don't know if they've fixed that at all in the last couple of months, but here's, here's the deal. This is a descriptor of a large group of people made up of a diverse amount of ethnicities and Miss Griffin, the racist, the ethnic hater jumped to the conclusion that I was describing one particular ethnic minority, and I'm not. I'm describing everybody involved, everybody involved that allowed this to happen, Jacob Fry, Governor Walls, and the people who started it, whether they be Boogaloo Boys or Antifa or Black Lives Matter or the New Black Panthers or the Black Liberation Army or black bloc, they're all criminals. They're all miscreants. They're all thugs. They're all animals. That's animalistic behavior. That's your base nature acting out. It's evil and it's criminal. And it can apply to anybody, regardless of the melanin count in their skin. Miss Griffin, you're the racist and you're so cognitively dissonant or have so much cognitive dissonance about this, you can't even realize how racist what you just said was. And you try to turn it around on me. Guess what? You're not smart enough, Miss Griffin, to do that. You got caught in your own trap. You racist. And I'll say again, Governor Walls, it's pathetic that you can deploy the National Guard in Minnesota ahead of a supposed threat that you have no actionable, and if you had the actionable, intelligence, you should be letting us see it. Because if I find out that somebody that I know is involved in this, I will turn them in personally. This is all a shell game. And you're trying to look tough when it's popular to look tough. But you wouldn't do this if there was a riot going on over a law enforcement involved shooting not until there had been some time to give them space. And you demonstrated this back in the end of May and early June. People, you need to push back against this. You need to learn how to see cognitive dissonance when people are exercising it. And you need to recognize it in yourself because we all do it to some degree. But you have got 
to push back on it. And you have to learn how to dismantle it. You have to learn how to deal with it because this is never going to end until we start counterpunching these, these proverbial punches that come at us. As always, Six Emperor Tyrannus.